Today I've got a nice problem from the 1965 Spanish Math Olympiad. And something that I think is really nice about this problem is it highlights how Math Olympiad questions have changed over time. So obviously 1965 is quite a long time ago at this point. Okay, so let's look at the problem and we'll make a little bit of a discussion of how this kind of problem is quite different than the ones that we see now. Okay, so let's observe, observe that if we've got a fraction A over B is the same thing as a fraction C over D, then the difference of the numerators divided by the difference of the denominators is equal to the original fraction. So we'll do some examples of this as well as work out why it works. Then we wanna suppose that we've got a fraction written two different ways as 3x minus z over 3x minus 5z and also as 3y minus 4z over 3y minus 8z. And then notice if we take the difference of the numerators over the difference of the denominators, we get 3x minus 3y plus 3z for both the resulting numerator and the denominator, and thus this is one. But then we can notice that this original starred fraction may not always be equal to one. So I'll let you guys work out some examples where this is most definitely not equal to one, but those aren't too hard to find. Okay, then the question here is kind of what's up or really what the problem said as stated is what's the logical inconsistency behind this? Okay, so let's start by looking at some examples of this phenomenon and then we'll prove this phenomenon kind of in general and then move on to the solution. So here's like a fairly simple example of this phenomenon. So let's take four over five. Notice that's the same thing as 20 over 25. Now let's take the difference of the numerators and the difference of the denominators. So that'll be 20 minus four over 25 minus five. And so that's gonna be 16 over 20. But then this can re reduce back down to four over five. So everything works out there. Okay, now let's look at this in general. So if A over B is the same thing as C over D, then that tells us that C is a multiple of A and D is a multiple of B. So I'll just say it's the kth multiple. And you might say, well, what happens if the absolute value of a is larger than C, well then you just put the multiplier on the other side, but that's kind of the same kind of thing. Okay, now let's look at the quotient of the difference of the numerators and the difference of the denominators. So our new fraction, A minus C over B minus D is equal to A minus AK over B minus BK, which is A, one minus K, B, one minus K, and in this case, we can see that the one minus K cancels in the numerator and the denominator, and we get A over B, which is the same thing as our original fraction. So that like maybe quote unquote proves this phenomenon up here. But you should have kind of a siren going off in your head. What happens if K is equal to one? Then this doesn't really make any sense because we have zero over zero. And that's like sort of the problem that we'll see in this like thing that's happening over here. Okay, so a quick example of that happening, maybe the simplest example, is if we take one half equals one half, so that's clearly true. And now we take one minus one over two minus two, that's the same thing as zero over zero, which doesn't make any sense. So this phenomenon seems to work unless these two fractions are kind of more equal than equal. In other words, the numerators are the same and the denominators are the same. Okay, so now that we've kind of explored what's going on here, let's look at the solution. So our solution will start by the meaning of these two fractions being equal. So let's recall that these two fractions are equal if the product of this numerator and this denominator is the same thing as the product of this numerator and this denominator. And this is in fact like putting an equivalence relation on the set z cross z. I have a previous video of that which you can check out if you'd like to.
Okay, so like I said, if those two fractions are together, then that gives us the following product equation. We have 3x minus z times 3y minus 8z. So that's from this product equals, let's see, 3y minus 4z over 3x minus 5z, or I should say times 3x minus 5z. Okay, so now from here we'll just expand everything out. So this will give us 9xy plus 8z squared from 3x times 3y and 8z times z. And then let's see what else we have. We have minus 24xz, then minus 3yz. So that's what we get for that expansion. So let's see what we get for the next expansion. So we'll have 9xy again, and then we'll have plus 20z squared, and then minus 12xz minus 15xz when all is said and done. Okay. So now we'd like to, first of all, cancel everything we can cancel, which is only one term, or maybe one term on either side. So this 9xy, we'll cancel with this 9xy. And then from there, we can start combining like terms. So this 8z squared can be moved over and combined with the 20z squared. This 24xz with the 12xz. And then finally this 3yz and this 15yz. So moving things around gives us the following equation. We'll have 12z squared is the same thing as 12yz minus 12xz. So again, that's just from moving things around. We can clearly do a little bit of simplification here. Notice that it gives us z squared equals z times y minus x. And you might say, well, let's just cancel 1z from both sides of the equation, but that's only allowed when z is not equal to 0. Well, let's look over here in the original fractions. When z is equal to 0, our left-hand side is 3x over 3x, which is 1. Our right-hand side will be 3y over 3y, which is also equal to 1. But that means our original fraction is equal to one. So there's actually no problem here where z is equal to zero. So the only problem that occurs is when, is when z is not equal to zero. So let's look at the case when z is not equal to zero. That means we can divide z from both sides and give us z equals y minus x. Then we can take this z equals y minus x and plug it into this orange starred equation over here. And notice that we get 3x minus 3y plus 3y minus x in the numerator and the denominator. I won't rewrite it in the denominator, but you have the exact same thing. But notice that simplifies the numerator down to zero and the denominator also down to zero. But zero over zero doesn't make any sense. It's most definitely not equal to one. So that's the problem that we've uncovered is that when z is not equal to zero in this original equation, then that forces this fraction down here to not make any sense. And that's a good place to stop.